Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First, I would like to thank Mr. Jakub Yanda, Director of the European Values Center for Security Policy, for inviting me today to discuss foreign meddling, which is currently one of the most significant threats to democracies worldwide. This summit is especially timely given the recent elections in several countries and the challenges arising from COVID-19, issues that are susceptible to being misrepresented, distorted, and exploited for malicious purposes. Every day, Taiwan faces suppression from the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, in the forms of military, economic, diplomatic, political, and digital threats. Recently, the CCP has shown its attempt to escalate these hybrid threats against Taiwan. It is no secret that the CCP military harassment, among all others, has become one of the most eminent threats to Taiwan. In the past two months, different types of fighters and bombers of the Chinese Communist Party's People's Liberation Army have flown into our air defense identification zone around 30 times, and some of them crossing the medium line. Although they were all immediately expelled by Taiwan's Air Force, it is obvious that the CCP aims not only to exhaust our national defense capability, but also to warn Taiwan of receiving high-level officials from the international society. I would especially like to point out the CCP's cyber warfare and disinformation campaigns, which are being some of the most difficult to counter, as the CCP has greatly expanded its global media reach through the so-called Grand Propaganda Plan. Taiwan, like all free and open democracies, is vulnerable to information warfare conducted by hostile state actors. But like other democracies, Taiwan is uniquely susceptible to China's influence due to its geographic, ethnocultural, and linguistic proximity, as well as Taiwan's high internet penetration rate, which is roughly 90%. In fact, Taiwan's Executive Yuan's Department of Cybersecurity estimates that more than 50% of the 30 million cyber attacks aimed at Taiwan each month mostly originate in China. Moreover, the advent of social media and the popularity of platforms such as Facebook and Instagram have made it easier than ever for disinformation to spread rapidly, especially when it is shared by trusted sources, such as friends and family. In recent years, the Taiwan government has taken a number of steps to combat disinformation, such as passing amendments concerning cyberspace and creating real-time news clarification web pages of various agencies. And under the Global Cooperation and Training Framework, GCTF for short, Taiwan, the United States, Japan, and Sweden have co-hosted workshops on combating disinformation, strengthening cybersecurity, and cultivating media literacy. We sincerely welcome other European countries to join this framework. Non-governmental organizations are also working to counter disinformation. For instance, the Taiwan Fact Check Center conducts fact verification on information relevant to public affairs, promoting openness, transparency, and accountability. Unfortunately, however, Disinformation and misinformation often spread too quickly for the government and private sectors to keep up. And so our approach must also be people-centered, raising awareness among members of the press, civil society, and the general public. The year 2020 has been defined by COVID-19 and its repercussions. Worse yet, 
the pandemic has been accompanied by an infodemic, a pandemic of disinformation. Not surprisingly, Taiwan's democratic approach to tackling these challenges has contrasted sharply with that of communist China and other authoritarian governments. While China restricted the flow of news and information, silencing the truth, Taiwan's Central Epidemic Command Center held daily press conferences to update the public on COVID-19 developments. In addition, more than 100 digital maps were created to provide real-time information on available face masks in pharmacies. Members of the public were required to present their national health insurance card when purchasing masks which prevent stockpiling and panic. The lessons learned from the Taiwan model for disease prevention are clear. Timely public access to accurate information, transparency, and government accountability save lives in a pandemic. Combating disinformation has directly benefited Taiwan and encouraged its people to be civic-minded, take anti-pandemic measures, and prevent the spread of the virus. Taiwan is often described as a beacon of democracy for the Asia-Pacific region and the ethnic Chinese community. Taiwan will continue to defend human rights, freedom, and democracy, but we need your staunch support now more than ever. This summit is a step in the right direction, and there is much work to be done. Taiwan will continue to step up its efforts to address foreign meddling, as well as analyzing trends in disinformation and sharing the findings with the media and civil society at home and abroad. I would like to once again thank our hosts and all the participants for allowing me to share these experiences of Taiwan. I'm convinced that the summit and the discussions will be engaging, inspiring, and productive. Thank you.